time to learn about cat and mouse. So. Look at my studio! Okay, we're moving on to lesson three. Let's start with pattern wrap of the accent shape. So we need our needle punch batting and our accent shape cardboard. You still need your wet rag, dry rag, and your tray with the, the glue and your roller with the original formula, tacky glue. Apply a very light layer of glue onto the accent shape then flip the shape and place it onto the batting. With the pad and wrap technique, the fabric is not glued to the batting, it is wrapped around the batting, snugly, with the seam allowance glued to the cardboard underside. Trim the batting away, beveling your scissors inwardly while cutting. The goal is for no batting to extend past the cardboard edge. Trim the fabric to the accent shape with a one half inch seam allowance. With fabric on work surface wrong side up, roll an edge of the cardboard with the glue and then center the cardboard onto the fabric, batting side down. Place a finger or two in the center of the shape. With your other hand, pull the seam allowance up onto the glue and press it in place. Ease the fabric around curves. Pull snugly each time. Trim the fabric bulk at the tip by slicing down, then trimming away the little triangular bit at the tip. Now complete the remaining side. If this piece happens to be velvet, the velvet finds the glue in a heartbeat. Keep your hands especially clean. I am pulling the fabric very tightly against the cardboard because I don't want any gaposis between the cardboard edge and the fabric. Once done, flip and flatten. One way to transfer the embroidery or ribbon work design to the pattern wrapped shape is to find the center, mark it with a pin along the top edge, and then just eyeball the design lines on the right side using a pencil. Let's say you're not comfortable with the idea of embroidering through cardboard. Well, instead, Cut your accent shape from Timtex or Peltex, a product very easily sewn through. Cut your shape and add to it a layer of batting as with the cardboard. To transfer the design to the fabric, trace the accent shape onto the fabric wrong side up with a pencil. Baste stitch on the traced line. Place fabric aligned onto the transfer design with fabric right side up. Pin fabric to paper on a sunny window and trace design using a pencil. Now you can either embroider the design onto the fabric first or wrap the fabric around the Timtex piece then embroider it. With either method of choice, cut fabric with a three-quarter inch seam allowance. Using a doubled thread with a knotted end, run a gathering stitch all around fabric. End with thread on fabric top side. Now pull the gathering stitch gently a bit. Slip the Timtex piece batting side down into cup, pull thread taut and cinch as much as possible. For a more snug fit, ladder stitch across the back side. This method works best on simpler shapes. A more complex shape will require bit by bit wrapping and sewing. 
glue may work too with some fussiness. In lesson 4a, I'll show the embroidery and ribbon work techniques for this design. Peel away the paper backing from the fabric ephemera piece. Trim off the message along the lower edge using a rotary cutter. Now, trim the remaining curved lower edge of ephemera with a 3 8 inch seam allowance following the design lines. Clip the curved edge to the lower design lines to facilitate pressing that edge under. And now press the upper and lower edges under on both pieces. As you can see, the ephemera pieces have been prepped by pressing the edges under. I did use a little bit of water spray for this process. Now let's fit the larger ephemera to a piece of batting. Place your design elements on the banner front to get a feel for a good position for everything. Mark the ephemera location tentatively at the sides with pins. Turn the piece over, true up your placement, reposition pins as necessary. Place the ephemera piece onto a piece of batting. Trim the batting to match the ephemera shape. Now place the batting on the banner back side, aligning centers. Trim batting along sides to match shape of banner. Slip batting under ephemera seam allowances and trim batting if necessary. Use a toothpick to place a light layer of glue onto the ephemera seam allowance, then press the seam allowance in place onto the batting. Don't forget to flip and flatten. Use this same technique to glue the raw edges of the narrow strip down. It's time to move on to the next lesson, which is going to be uh, doing the embroidery and ribbon work. See you in a bit.